Welcome back. I wasn't quite sure which tracks would get in racing on Friday night, so I went with the safe bet and traveled to Clinton County Raceway to take in their action. So let's get to some highlights. The night opened with the 270 micro sprints. It's the 41 of Sean Good leading them to the green. Before he even crosses the start finish line, he has the 12 of Chris Pyatt looking to his inside. Pyatt has the inside spot on the backstretch. So who's it going to be as they enter turns three and four? It's fairly even until Pyatt exits four. A few laps later, the ex of Skeets Hockenbrock is in second, but Colby Woomer in the 32 shoots to his inside on the backstretch to take the position. In the closing laps, Mike Shuckers will take the runner-up spot from Woomer. In a one-lap shootout, Pyatt holds on for the win. Chris and his family are no strangers to victory lane. His uncle was former NASCAR driver Jimmy Spencer, and his grandfather is the legendary Ed Spencer. Here's your top finishers. Bryce Stevens and Brian Kishbaugh round out the top five. From the micros to their full-scale brethren, the 410 sprints. Here we're a couple of laps in as the 808 of Jamie Bodo takes the lead from Roger Fickett. The five of Chuck Bryan has a problem which bottles up the back of the field. When the dust settles, he's parked in victory lane. Chuck, I don't think it works that way. Two drivers charging to the front were the 33 of Scott Lutz and the 42 of John Smith. Here, Smith gets by Fickett for second. After a couple of restarts, Bodo has kept the lead while the veteran Judy Bates is reeling in Smith and Lutz. It's getting down to crunch time. Bates is trying every way that she can to get around Smith for second. Meanwhile, Smith makes contact with Bodo the 42 will try the outside for the lead. Bodo has to check up to avoid Smith exiting turn four. One lap later, Bates tries to get a run on Bodo, but there's contact sending Bates off of the track. On the next restart, something breaks on Bodo's machine. Now that's heartbreaking. From there, Smith went unchallenged to take the checkers. John, congratulations on the win. You got up to the front there pretty quickly and just bodied your time. Take us through those last couple of laps. Uh, I just, um, got, I got the second, I figured I'd be safe and ride second for a while. And then, uh, you know, when I, when I saw time to go there, I think we were like five left. We had five laps to go and I stepped up the pace a little bit and got by him. And uh, that was it, uh, cruised on for the victory. So you knew you had something left in the tank there to get by him for the win. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were definitely sandbagging a little bit there, and uh, when it when I, when I just got the timing right to do it, you know, put things in place to make the pass. That's when I knew I could kind of let it out a little bit. And uh, towards the end, I think we had two to go. It was something like that. Uh, my crew told me I pulled out five six car lengths on second there. So yeah, we had we had a little bit extra left in there. Looks like the track was rather sticky and fast. Yeah, yeah. First time this year that um, felt you know. I can get some of the power to the ground and, uh, you know, of course it showed, but uh, we changed a lot on the car last week, went through it and, uh, you know, me and my crew really picked up our game and I think now we got something to look forward to for next week to go even better. The 410 Sprint's top five looks like this. John Smith, your winner, followed by Lutz, Cole, Petock and Stimeling. There was an interesting scenario going into the Pro Stock feature. There was a $100 bounty on Tim Crape in the 07. Tim had won the first three features at Clinton County. Keep him out of victory lane and collect the additional prize. If not, Tim had some extra spending money. Less than three laps in, Tim has moved from 12th up to 4th. Do you see where this is going? Here's Tim taking second from the 20 of Dale Schweikert, and he barely misses the tractor tire in doing so. Less than a lap later, Tim is in first place after getting around the zero of John Bowles. Tim has a huge lead, but there's some great racing behind him. Denny Forney in the double zero makes this pass to secure second. No upsets on this night. Tim Crape wins his fourth straight feature and a little bonus. Tim, you make this look easy even though you're handicapped each week. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems like they just open up whenever I'm coming up through and just there's holes and I go through and then they don't shut on me. One of these days they're going to shut. Now uh, you make it sound rather easy. It looks like you came up there pretty quickly. Uh, what's the key to the handling on this that you get up through, th through there? A lot of hard work in the garage. Uh, we're always tinkering and trying new stuff and um, 
90% of what you're winning your races is in the garage at home working on it and getting it to hook up and get forward bite and stuff like that. I mean, if you don't get that, you don't go nowhere. What do you think of this bounty they have on you? I wish it would be a little more, <laughs> but I, I think it's pretty cool as long as somebody don't wreck me on purpose just to get it, but I don't know how that's going to work if they put me out, if they'll get money still or not. How long can you continue this winning streak? I don't know, the most I ever won in one in uh, what streak was eight eight races over Port Royal there in 07. I won eight in a row, but uh, that's the most I ever won, and hard to tell. Maybe they need to up the bounty to keep Tim from winning. Here's your top five in the pro stocks, and in the four cylinders, it's another crepe in a 07, Matt Crepe, taking the top honors. Congratulations to all of the winners at Clinton County Raceway. There's much more to come. A teenager takes to the track in his new machine. Also, some information on a special benefit named for a special fan. We'll be right back.